This is a podcast from the Queen City Podcast Network. Welcome to Nerd School. Nerd! 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 Yeah. Suck it, nerd! 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 Uh. Me, daddy ass. Nerd, nerd, nerd. Welcome to Nerd School. My name is Low Key. Welcome to the Nerd School podcast. You jerk. What do you mean, TBJ? Why can't Art Star and I be left alone? You can barely behave you, when all four you, of us are here. Are you are sad here. we'd be handsy? <laughs> you're already handsy, and that's when all four of us are here. So who knows what you're doing when it's just the two of you? Oh yeah, all right. Nerd school oh, resuming wow wow classes. Oh, uh, wow wow. Professor, uh, the responsible professors are back. <laughs> the cool. The professor. grownups are here. The grownups are here. It's like summer school, right. right? Yeah, you're like Mark Harmon, <laughs> uh, and, and I'm uh, uh, am I Christy Alley? And you're Chainsaw, or are you Dave? I think I'm Chainsaw. Or are you, uh, 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 oh, the little Weasley kid? I don't remember. I'm I'm Chainsaw. Like TBJ or is Kirsty Alley, and Andy, you're. Oh no, wait. If Art's Mark Harmon, I guess that makes Andy Kirsty Alley, and that makes TBJ. Well, that probably makes the me the professor, the, the dickhead vice principal, or whatever. There was a vice. Was there a vice? Who was actually? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Summer was, school is. The and greatest. it was Ashley. Yeah, Kirstie Alley was dating the the evil vice principal, but then was won over to Freddie Shoops. Uh, yep. Yeah. So welcome to the summer school episode, where we're all yeah. we're going to talk about today is summer school. The next. I was movie wondering a minute ago, like the next phase break, I guess, uh, whether wild. or not we should actually try to make a journey through all the Transformers movies. <laughs> Or if it's not even worth it, just like to see like the the worst side of nerd movies is something that should be I don't awesome. Think they're it's, that bad. Yeah, they're. I mean, they're, we've they're seen pu- the worst yeah. side of nerd. We've movies, already gone movies. the worst. Barbarella and uh, yes. Howard the Duck. Or- yeah, fair enough. What if you guys were to make like say Summer School, the movie Summer School? Yeah. If you had to put it in the MCU, like what would you have happen? Like what would be the storyline that adds no, no difference to you? Uh, just, <laughs> no difference. Uh, Who's the superhero? Yeah, except the only difference is yeah, like real it'll life. It'll be like X Men. Superheroes don't touch everybody. It'll be like X-Men. no, it'll be like a superhero that is always getting in trouble, so he's given this shitty assignment. Much it'll like be like movie. Sky High, and all the students just happen to have powers, but they're kind of screw ups. So. Same chainsaw might actually have chainsaws for hands. Yep. Whereas which is, Dave which, has Dave's which, for hands. To be fair. <laughs> to be fair. To be fair. To be fair. To be fair. There's a new anime oh, called Chainsaw Courtney, Man. Courtney Thornsmith turns out to actually be the silver surfer. There you yeah. go. Because he sees the surf chick who just wants to go out and surf the waves. Courtney Thornsmith was yeah, oh, oh that's from, right. Yeah. She, wasn't she also in point break? Uh I don't I know. I think about of that. a different person. He was in Melrose Place, and uh, according to Jim, and uh, oh, I remember it. <laughs> according Place. to Jim, how do you know that? Yeah. Courtney, it's, Thorne. It, it was, that was like one of the the archetypal uh, oh. fat dumb guy gets hot blonde lady, and like so him. many sitcoms. I know who so she yeah, yeah. is. I just realized I get her mixed up with uh, the one who's on that show. Adventures of Babysitting. Um, Courtney Thornsmith is the one who made the movie with Carrot Top, and then in that Norm Macdonald, Conan O'Brien clip where Norm Macdonald is like hopped up on cold medicine and just completely rips into that while during her segment trying to <laughs> plug that movie. Norm Macdonald is just shitting all over it and embarrassing her, but hilariously. Okay, so, so what if you could just take every movie to put in them so you all you have to do is you, have, you play the whole movie regular and you just add some scene of the building getting crushed while Hulk is smashing something. You take one scene from a Hulk. It'll movie, be like it'll be like an episode of Family Guy, right? Where you yeah. have like the cutaway. That's like that one time like I an Avengers farted guy. on Captain America. No, they just talk. <laughs> they, or memory. Yeah, or, or somebody watches the TV and say, "Oh, look at that." 
uh, Hulk broke something. Or look, it's the whole end of summer school. The movie's over, credits are about to roll, and then a, a building explodes. And it's like, oh, Hulk's just <laughs> mad something. And then you go yeah, back. You got a new idea. Trademark. Trademark, Trademark it. Nerd I'm going to connect every single movie to the <clears throat> MCU. I think and Art's on the something Jovers. with making it an X Men movie, though. That's like the the class turns out to be mutants. Oh, and they all get powers. Yeah. Isn't that what TBJ said, or did Art say that? Uh, one of them. That was the Art Star who said. Yeah, what did you say? Originated the students my credit. with X Men. Yes, I okay. said they'd have superpowers. He said X Men. Oh, okay. No one was going to take your pre- credit from you, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Joe I was, was trying to I was, reassign it. I was reassigning it because I didn't. It's so weird with art just being on the zoom call with just being blending into the background and like is that him in front of that house is that art way back there we never know we don't I'm know pretty he sure does. he's got That's some harry potter no oh, harry, yeah. potter. harry potter harry potter harry potter you're a wizard you're he's a wizard not, harry. harry potter one of the main uh, hobbits is in black panther <laughs> Uh, <laughs> is that gonna be his uh, claim to fame? You need no, no, no hobbits are not Harry Potter. They are Lord of the Rings. So. I know. I was gonna give him that. But that's Oops. Okay. I thought uh, they were and the same. There you have it, guys. There's we no are back again for <laughs> another another Black Panther episode. Yeah, this is going to be the third out of probably twelve. But here, here's how we should kick this off. Here's how we should kick this off. Okay, Harry Potter. You know, two of the professors weren't here last week. Yeah. Right? Absent. And one of the professors, Ando, mm-hmm. he was so upset that he wasn't here because he wanted to answer the question, Joe, that I can't answer for you. <laughs> oh, the war dogs. Oh, yes. yes. He has goo gobs of war dog info for you like he had a nerd boner when he was like (laughs) oh i could have been i got so much about war dog like when i tell you he always put my eye out well now that i've watched so i've watched a couple more times since last time okay i'm kind of gathering the what the war dogs are now they're referring to that blue tattoo in yeah, the but, but, side of their lip let, as a let, war dog let, tattoo. Let Hando give you his war dog history. But yeah, you give us the background of the war dogs. Do it, Andy. Right. The war dogs, yeah. as referenced in Black Panther, in that context, in the film, they are basically Wakanda's network of spies that throughout the world, embedded everywhere, spying on everything, assessing everything for uh, threats to Wakanda. And Killmonger's whole thing is to, he knows that, he and knows he's they're trying to activate stationed. them and turn them into like terrorist agents to destabilize everything and, and uh, uh, take over the world. See, essentially, uh, that's where I disagree. But, I don't think he wants to turn them into terrorists. I'm, I'm going to warn everybody. They I'm would be defined as terrorists. Yeah, no, I get it, but uh, he's he wouldn't call them terrorists. They would be called terrorists by other he, by other people. But yeah, I don't think what he wants to do is necessarily terrorism. Uh, you don't think we're take. trying to create a military state? Mm-hmm. Well, I don't think he wants to do that either. I well, he, he just wants to foment revolutions. Yeah, and and, and it's uh, time to flip the you know flip the script. I mean, now everybody who is a warmonger or a killmonger once he gets power, maybe he's gonna be bad. But I think there's a lot of merit to what he says and what what he wants to do, and that all the injustice, like there's there's our people are being sacrificed everywhere and they don't have the weapons to fight their oppressors and you guys have these weapons i don't know we'll get into the whole thing but i i i find myself kind of rooting for him sometimes but getting like, was... like the way he does it isn't the best way and he i mean i was rooting for his physical body <laughs> but i don't know if i was rooting for his idea there are moments but yeah. he is what i would call misguided yeah but you, that was, but, but you can see why he is. I mean, yeah, really, that's kind of the, yeah. uh, the like the sign of a really good villain is that you almost agree with him. That's why I think they've done well. And we've talked about this before, previous ones. That it's so, like all of them. Like we talked about, uh, who was the guy, Baron Zemo? Like you kind of understand where he's coming from. Me and I might not be on his side, but you kind of get why he is the way he is. And I was going to sympathize with their origins. Yeah. I was going to ask you, did like since you feel this way about Killmonger, 
then you then you do you do also feel the same way about Zemo? But then also going even further I what back, like what about Carly? <laughs> like, do you feel the same way? Kind I, of sort of like, I Carly. No, Carly no. from uh, Carly Morgenthau from oh, Falcon, Falcon Winter, Winter Soldier. Soldier. Oh crap! I can't remember what her name was either. Oh, well, she <laughs> I, knew, was... I knew I was going too far. She... I knew I was too going far too back. far when I said it. Yeah. Okay. And run, yeah, I, 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 think I do. She's the pretty. She's the daughter of. Oh no, that's Peggy. Peggy. No, you're thinking so now. <laughs> hey, isn't she Peggy's granddaughter? No, that's Sharon Carter. Oh, oh Sharon Carter. And that's her, her great guess. Who was Carly? She was the leader of the Flag Smashers. Oh, oh, yes, 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 yes. Yes, I think I do. I am on her side too, I think. I'm not on her side necessarily, but I get I get what she's saying. Mm-hmm. You know, and that's that makes it good. like it's the Magneto thing. It's uh, yeah. you, you understand why he is what he is. You're just like, yeah. I don't standing up for the oppressed mutants who are always, you and know, treated on Cyclops. Cyclops jumped on the yeah, uh, lately. Yeah. But that's uh, that's X Men stuff. Uh, the the, the War Dogs, the Black Panther's network of spies is kind of like was sort of introduced in the priest run of the Marvel Knights version of Black Panther in the late 90s. And they okay. were basically, uh, they had a, their name was the Hatutzarase. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing Say that right. Say it again? Uh, Sing, it's, it. Sing it this time. It's two words. H-A-T-U-T, Hatutzarase, Z-E-R-A-Z-E. That was their name, and it translates to uh, the Dogs of War. Okay. And what they were in in initially, uh, like the introduced pretty much at the same time the Dora Milaje were introduced. They were like the Wakandan secret police. Like they were and Black Pan- and T'Challa didn't know anything about him. It was a T'Chaka thing. It was like one of his thing. He let it happen because their leader was uh uh this guy named Hunter, also known as the White Wolf who is actually an adopted older sibling of T'Challa's. And he's actually like a, like a white guy whose family crash landed on like Wakandan shores or something. And T'Chaka took him in. And Doesn't raised White Wolf stone. become the name of Winter Soldier later? That's what they, that's how they sort of. They do reference him. Yes. Yeah. So that's not, they, not the same. Yeah. It's not, they haven't introduced this character, but they've just given his name to Bucky. Gotcha. So they, and I don't, again, another nerd nod. So that's like a nerd nod. Like yeah. It's like, like, oh, uh, yeah. They use Wolf's character. And that was like a thing I was excited about, but I was like, eh, but that's Bucky. Where's, what about the guy? So what the, the hey, way Bucky it was sucks. introduced, yeah, is, was <laughs> Hunter was loyal to T'Chaka and T'Chaka kind of allowed him to operate to like, to do the ruthless stuff that he didn't want to do to be a good king. He let Hunter handle the, like the, the wet work, the dirty work, the like political tortures and assassinations in order to protect Wakanda. And then when T'Challa became king, he, when he found out that Hunter was still doing shit like that with, uh, it became a big conflict. So are we to assume this shit like that is (laughs) sort of keep an eye on other countries. And if they get wind of, of wakanda or if they seem to know what wakanda is about or if they get word of the vibranium then he just cuts it off and kills them type of thing uh yeah that's kind of what hunter was doing with the the war dogs but they also had like uh they weren't just spies they were also like they had full-on black panther outfits except they were white they were uh like imagine black panthers holding guns and in completely white suits and uh, they, there was like a little small army of them as well. So like they I were also like, like, yeah. I think you soldiers you have like an action figure, one of those, or a, you had something with that. I might have. I had a, some hero clicks mods made hero of those clicks. guys. Hero clicks. Just because I was a fan of that storyline, and it's yeah, it's interesting. It's about it's another way of this is the methodology. I mean, there's there's elements of Hunter in Killmonger, I think, in this version okay. of Killmonger. But so it seems like here in the MCU, the um, the war dogs aren't as secret uh, because yeah, the child's aware of them. Like because Nakia yeah. is one. They said she is on a war dog mission, right at the beginning yeah. of this. Mm-hmm. 
And, and yeah, I mean, some of them could be, you know, rescuing people and doing things like that. Other, it's, it's just ruthlessly killing people. So I, they haven't By really any means necessary. Yeah. So they may have, they may dive into more war dog stuff in the future, but it's interesting. Ooh, no. Like everyone's, or I guess well, T'Challa is aware that they exist. He might not be know the extent of their methodology. Okay, or so that kind of, I think that that really helps explain how it was in the comics, and that mm-hmm. um, it kind of explains when when um, Killmonger takes controls. We already have people stationed. We're gonna you know go do this thing and i mean i like yeah. the idea that he's helping stop oppression all over the world that he's seen and lived i mean he grew up you know in it you know in mm-hmm. oakland or whatever so and with mc hammer just watching by not even helping <laughs> what we established in the previous episode yes MC yes mc hammer he was he MC was hammer did not help <laughs> MC Hammer, Hammer was in the Navy. Uh, a lot of people don't know that, but by '92 he was put. Is that a conclusion you came legit to? to quit. Yeah, we did. Uh, well, I googled it, <clears throat> and that was we, I will, th- th- we 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 thoroughly discussed it last episode. <laughs> yeah, we discussed a lot of things, and I will warn you guys: I did a lot of um, research about mundane bullshit about people that are in Black Panther. So. And I'm gonna just—it was entirely an episode of Notable Alumni, wasn't it? It was, pretty much. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but a lot of these actors they got are really talented people that are like playwrights and have done all this amazing stuff. So I'll drop that in there when we get to it. But so I found a I found a uh, summary of Black Panther on Gradesaver.com. All right, it's a Black Panther film study guide summary. They sort of kind of using this person's or did that. They were kind of writing. Uh, All right. And then I'm sprinkling my own stuff. So stop me whenever you have knowledge or something you guys want to talk about. Uh, mm-hmm. I got my own little what notes. questions you have. Yeah, I have concerns. I have questions in here and some like, do I understand this right? This is what I'm understanding. Uh, well, throw it at us. We'll I'll throw, yeah. So it starts out with centuries ago, five African tribes were at war with each other over possession of a meteorite filled with vibranium the strongest metal in the universe and it's told you hear you hear the story of a, a child being told the story and with an animation which is cool one warrior ingests a heart-shaped herb affected by the vibranium and finds that he's suddenly bestowed with superhuman powers and he becomes the first black panther his first accomplishment is to unite all but the jabari tribe all but one who went up to the mountains forming the new nation of wakanda and they use the vibranium to become a technological superpower, but isolate themselves and hide from the rest of the world by pretending to be a third world nation. And then we go to 1992, where King T'Chaka visits his brother in Jobu in Oakland, California, where MC Hammer and Oaktown 357 are from. Um, and Art Star and I talked a little bit about geography, where I was mistaken where Oakland is in California. It was closer to San Francisco, where I thought it was closer to L.A. I didn't really you know. Dumb it. asshole! The, the I lived time. in San Francisco <laughs> for five years. I didn't Oakland know across the bridge. No <laughs> has a bad memory. I had, I never visited you in San Francisco. I had no yeah, idea Oakland did. was up there. Uh, and then I, as I was looking at the map, I was like, "Geez, San Diego's right there." So San Diego's right by L.A. That's really San Diego is about two hours south of L.A. and then it's pretty much right on the border of Mexico. Then you Mexico. drive north from LA about six hours, you get to San Francisco, and then you cross a bridge and you're in Oakland. Well, we all not everybody lived in California, pal. And then if you go an hour uh, or Some so, of us east, were born in Georgia. Sacramento, uh, and then uh, Berkeley is right next, right north of Oakland. Well, it made me realize about where all these baseball and football teams are located, and how far apart they are. So, and there's actually a town called Vacaville, which means cow town. Did you go cow tipping there? No, I just like to know that I know vaca means cow in Spanish. Anyway, we see T'Chaka visiting <laughs> Njobu, and Njobu is played by Sterling K. Brown. Who uh, uh, This Is Us. Yeah, from This Is Us, and he also is from St. Louis. He's like award-winning wife. Sterling K. Brown. That's right. What awards has he won? He's got a few Emmys. Like he's been killing it on This Is Us as far as awards. I feel mm-hmm. like every season he's been nominated, he takes home one. Now, and he's just so damn good in that show. He's here, so. Here's good. my question about This Is Us. 
It's a little offshoot. I was getting a little off track. Mandy Moore is his mom. Is the last and of Milo us? Milo Ventimiglia from Hero is his dad. Oh, really? Who also is young Sylvester Stallone or something? Or like Sylvester Stallone's kid in Rocky and or Rocky something like that? Five, I Rocky Five, the one nobody likes. Is the <laughs> is the Last of Us the last season of This Is Us? No, <laughs> so different. You so dumb damn different. Ass. <laughs> <laughs> Two different genres of television, but they're the same <laughs> characters. Are in both, right? No. <laughs> no. Go to bed. Oh, okay, Shirley K. Brown a about the zombies. I think he's a graduate. Last of Us is based on a video game. So is This Is Us. What video game is that? The Sims, it's, uh, the Sims. <laughs> yeah. No, that's not <laughs> I it. Guess so. Sterling Just K. to Brown. know that Sterling K. Brown has won twelve major awards: two Critics' Choice, oh. a Golden Globe, an NAACP, three Emmys, four Screen Actors wow. Guild, and then yeah, that's now, where he is. The, here's the most important question, TBJ: Can Sterling K. Brown get it? I like his wife a lot, so I'm going to say no. But if he wasn't married, <laughs> who's, yeah. his, who's his wife? Um, she is, she's not a big actress, but they do a lot of things where they show up together and do interviews together and they're very sweet. Okay. F marry or kill Sterling Brown, Forrest Whitaker, and, um, uh, Michael B. Jordan. No, uh, <laughs> David Kalula. <laughs> Aren't they all married? Why'd you get married? Cool Rock Ski from the Fat Boys. The third one. Oh, yeah. I'm not playing this game. <laughs> Wait, is yeah, I knew you cool were Rock the last one. surviving fat boy. Uh, cool Rock is the last surviving fat boy, which I don't think people would realize. I think people would have guessed. I mean, everybody guessed Buffy was going to die. Anyway, yeah, Sterling yeah, K. Yeah. Brown is a graduate <laughs> from the Mary Institute and St. Louis Country Day School, home of the Rams in St. Louis. Uh, notable alumni include Joe Buck and Vincent Price. Vincent Price went to the same high school as Sterling K. Brown, and now you guys know that. Thanks for sharing that. Um, and my wife is from St. Louis, and I asked her. I woke her up one night when I f- read this to say, hey, have you ever heard of St. Louis Country Day School? And she was like, yeah, why? It was like Sterling K. Brown went there. And then she <laughs> went back to sleep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so here's a, here's a question from the nerd professor to sports dick, uh, the sports guy. Uh, Art- Joe Buck, you mentioned, as notable alumni. Yeah. Uh, all I know about it, I, I, I'm familiar with Joe Buck, and apparently everyone hates Joe Buck as a sportscaster. Well, his dad was I, Jack Buck. I don't know why. Who hates Joe Buck? I hate Everybody. Hates Joe Buck. I, everyone always talks about, oh, Joe Buck is the shittiest guy. Joe I Buck has him. one of those golden voices. I think they don't like the fact that Joe Buck, he I don't want to say he follows the money, but he likes to get paid. Joe right? Buck is biased in his in his in his uh ninety five percent of sports Joe Buck hates bias. the Vikings. Is that your thing? He's a ninety five percent of sports cast is the bias Cowboys Homer against whatever team that they love. Wait, wait, wait. Tool. How can you be a Homer for two different cities? Don't, don't you have Homer, to be from just, the city? No, you know he's from St. Homer. Louis, so he's probably a Cardinals Homer. You can't be a homer unless you're from the town that of the well team when, he's like. when he's in Mountain, he's clearly re- rooting that. for one team over the other. What's a homer? A homer generally in sports is like somebody who has rose colored glasses about their team. So like if I'm a Panthers fan, like I, every year I think the Panthers are going to win the Super Bowl. I'm But I feel uh, like you couldn't be a homer unless you're actually from the town. Yeah, homer the, was a bad Homer was a bad uh cuz it, it's your said, hometown it's, team. What I should have said okay. is he's biased toward when he calls a Yankees game, he's biased towards the Yankees everybody says. When he okay, calls a cowboy game, talking sports ball, and yeah, you confuse yeah. me. Yeah, so he's yeah. supposed to be a color. Co- he's supposed to be a commentator. He's supposed to be neutral, but he clearly gets more excited when a team, the teams that people hate, he likes all the teams that people hate. I think like the Yankees and the Cowboys, Cowboys and like Packers, but people don't all hate the Packers, but. He was okay. disgusted when Randy Moss scored a touchdown. And he pretended to moon the crowd. And he was like, that's disgusting. What a horrible person he is. That's awful. And uh, Randy Moss is just awesome. So <laughs> that's why I hate him. All right. I just thought I'd flip the script for a second and be the yeah. nerd. Ask Joe Buck. Yeah, I went to the same school, school. Sterling K. Brown. So it's, it's it's related to Black Panther. There you go. Home of the Rams. I guess. Okay. Uh, but that's anyway. St. Louis Country Day School is a fancy rich school, I think. Um and Forrest Whitaker. Country is Day also, means 
I think so. I think if there's a country day school, it means it's a rich school. I think it means fancy rich. I don't know. I I, I mean, we have Charlotte Country Day, and they're pretty fancy. Are they fancy? Okay. Shit. We yeah. had Mommy Valley Country Day. Every, yeah, it was closed is, every time there was a snow. Why is Country Day added to a school and makes it rich? And we have, well, we have Providence Day. They're rich. Yeah, why, I wonder if the, there's a specific approach to education that the like Country Day schools take. Like maybe yeah. everyone gets country so, time lemonade every. If they're, so day. If they're like a Providence night school. What's a country day school? All right, I'll work on that while you guys keep going. I'll look up country day. What is research? There's a lot of country day schools. Why are they called country day schools? Yeah, why not country night? It was a movement that grew out of the progressive education movement that traces its roots to the late 19th century in America. They provide the educational rigor, learning environment, community, and values that rank them the very best. Whatever that means. You are the best of the best. Country day schools sought to recreate the educational rigor, atmosphere, camaraderie, and character building aspects of the best college prep boarding schools while allowing students to return to their families. We are the elite of the the elite. Okay. All right. So it's just fancy pants. Um, All right, so uh, yeah. So anyway, we're in Oakland. Chaka visits his brother, and we find out that Njobu is an undercover spy. Tachaka accuses Njobu of helping the arms dealer named Ulysses Claw attack Wakanda steal vibranium, and we find out that later that that was Njobu's partner Zuri there, and the suspicions are true. My only problem with is the beginning of the movie. You know, now that I know what happened when I watched it a second time, I was like, "Well, why is he so happy to see him and he's so sweet with him when he's really there?" To yell at him, like, and he also loves him. <clears throat> he also but then he was also brother. trying to figure, trying to suss him out, called- right, to see if he was going to admit what he had done. Because he could admit it right away, and then he realized he's not going to admit it. So then he yells at him. But I feel like yeah. that's a normal reaction people would have. Yeah, I mean, it's also sort of establishes that country over family. They're all. Yeah he's the king he has to uh he can't and that's the whole exceptions. that's the whole struggle throughout the the movie i mean they have to really weigh that and i think we see that the best with uh nakia when she's you don't do you, it joe don't yeah, do it joe nakia didn't i nakia you did joe yeah. you did joe brant fundak damn you nakia, i i had nakia when i was phone. reading the comics it was nakia in my head all the time until this because wasn't there a phone company nokia called- nokia oh nokia that's nokia but yeah. nakia is a nakia. name yeah yeah uh well but we have a guy yeah. that keeps saying nakia and then so that's in my head now uh brant fundak um polo anyway when nakia has to well we'll get to it i guess when it's she- hard for a, a good man to be king we're a good man and it's hard for a king to also be a good man well and then yep. when, when he's overthrown and we have a new king it's like Okoye's struggle. Okoye's loyal to the new king because he's king. Mm-hmm. That's country over. Yeah, uh, everything. But she learns the lesson of that. But Nakia's. Don't love, cross your wife, my dude. And yeah. uh, the lesson of excessive patriotism. Nakia says, I love my country, but I love my, I love Black Panther. And then it's kind of that whole struggle. That's kind of the whole struggle of the thing. It's like your country mm-hmm. and what's blindly following your country can't always be good if they're not doing the right thing blindly following traditions which is t'challa's big rebellion against the spirit of his father it's like you are wrong you are all of you are wrong yeah we're leaving that boy mm-hmm. and that's where it's yeah i think they were wrong for leaving him but i also think they're wrong for not you know giving <laughs> giving vibranium to the people of color and but Oakland like in okay two that are Let, let's let's think about this logically what happens if they do that if they the white man gonna come in and steal it that's what's gonna happen <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. gangs you know it's already gang violence going on it's not gonna be gangs it's gonna be white people going how white did you get so much it. power and we're mm-hmm. gonna take it from you so there's he's right. that's, that's why they don't wage war on the world because that means the world is waging war on them and while they've got some high-tech business okay. they're not infallible that way because then they're gonna get then these white people are gonna get control of the weapons and then that's gonna mm-hmm. be it 
Yeah, and, and so the, and these the are way, all questions. Yes. Yeah. That is hard. Yeah. But, and the, the way yeah. Killmonger's going about it, ship out weapons to everybody and just start revolting is like Cause, you've Because right away Claw is getting yeah. hit and people are going to start dealing the weapons immediately. And mm-hmm. before you know it, Tony Stark has the weapons and then it's all... Yeah, like, and are the Avengers going to have to get involved to... Is Thor going to show up and say you need to stop waging war on the world? Mm-hmm. Is like they've got there's a lot of factors to how that yeah. plan so would actually work just logically. To keep them safe and just when they have to, which is difficult because I don't know. I guess maybe I didn't think it. All. But your loyalty is to your people. So while I am a I am a black woman, I my experiences of a black woman in America, and while I would love to help black people in the diaspora. I am limited by location. And so I'm going to start with my sphere of influence first before I can tackle the world. And that's what kind of, they're going to circle their sphere of influence before they just uh-huh. so you're go saying out at the world. TBJ is going to protect Art Star first. And no, then the first to get thrown off the boat. Outside. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Uh, yeah, like Wakanda you know is... That would happen because as a Sith apprentice. No, it would happen because I don't trust you because you are It would Sith. happen because you were, you were trying to ascend nope. to Sith. I'm going to look it's at okay. you. I'm going to remember okay. what you said about Kylo Ren killing his daddy. And if you can side with the dude who killed his own daddy, <laughs> then you could kill me. And then I, you got to go. Yeah, this is why you can't have bring the weapons because it instantly becomes a, an argument between the Sith and the Jedi. Mm-hmm. But I, like- I think I like his point of when he, when he yells about, you know, the they flood our cities with drugs and weapons and then we're overly policed and overly incarcerated mm-hmm. it's just like i mean that's the truth of america yeah that's the truth yes. like it's just and it's overwhelmingly people of color that are incarcerated for minor things all mm-hmm. the time so, so uh, it's just filled with modern gonna have slave free labor. prison slave labor that's modern it's just, day slavery yeah, it's modern it's just slavery that's yeah modern. and and that's what he lived it killmonger and he's like we we have the most powerful things in the world but our people let's think about how he go about it. it there's a way to go about it with without his method and i wouldn't blame a country in wakanda for what's happening and listen we know why america's america yeah. that's who i'm going after that's if i'm going after built, anybody that's how it was founded it was started it was built on yeah so if i'm taking somebody out of the kneecaps <laughs> <laughs> but let's Dear Shay, that's a that's a turn of phrase i'm not thing. taking anybody out but yeah. many it's not a threat but this movie also demonstrates that while wakanda is advanced and very uh, there's a lot of progress there it is not perfect it is not flawless and is not invulnerable exactly so they are well, not I guess, in a yeah, by position the of the movie take unfold, on, yeah and yeah you Killmonger see like comes in you see the strife he causes and the how easily it all just yeah. comes crumbling. You see the cracks, yeah. yeah. You see the cracks in the community because the, yeah. human nature. The co- yeah, the conflict between tradition as as this, and the American uh, comes in and ruins modernity. Everything. Yeah, which is and it's so they're not in a position to it like just unilaterally take on the world. Yeah, and so, T'Challa is basically taking Killmonger's intention at the end of you know, supporting people with resources and everything, but not doing it forcibly. His, yeah, his goal, also using I mean, the key is how successful it will be, is whatever. Things. But yeah, yeah, it's it's outreach. Yeah. It's uh, uh, support with you know, like education and uh, financial, like helping end poverty and things like that. Which is what she was all about. Lupita yeah, Nyong'o was all about that, and so That's right. using her peaceful way of doing it i don't know but it's like the american comes in and ruins everything but the american is the way he is because they abandoned him there you know yeah His there's trauma for so sure it's, it's kind of their mistake you know that you know, they probably, created the they created who he is yeah essentially yes yeah. so right and that's so, something they have to reconcile with yeah yep what kind of, yeah it's it's like recognizing which traditions are valuable and which traditions need to stop and it's protecting the lie as zuri calls it uh, and zuri is an interesting character he's very different from the comics or at least the, his comic origins oh really what's he like he was, in the comics uh in the comics he was like he was an older guy he was like a friend of t'chaka but he's also this huge burly dude 
that carries the spear of Bashenga everywhere, and he talks about the olden days all the time. He's he's like he's kind of like, like that. He, he, he seems good. he he was kind of like uh like he'd be one of the warriors three and Thor. He just like the guys trading war stories and talking. Oh, the traditions are they're super important and like always telling war stories and battle tales and stuff like that. <laughs> Excuse me. Whoa. You can edit that cough out. So you Sorry. think Forrest Whitaker was a bad choice to play Zuri? Not necessarily because of the way they they sort of changed his character a bit. I mean, if if it was a direct translation from comics, it would need to be, I don't know, uh <laughs> like Terry Cruz sized or oh, Terry Cruz, okay. Or uh yeah, or just some like huge a big dude. guy. But is for yeah. forever a bad choice? Ask yourself that. Well, he's also in the Star Wars universe, so he's everywhere. Yeah, it's 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 going to be it's a much less special thing to be in the Star Wars universe anymore. But because uh, because uh, Jack Black and Elizabeth, you can get some out. nerds angry. Listen, that was incredible. Wait a minute. What are you saying about Lizzo? Wait, I'm not. I'm just saying. Lizzo? I'm just saying. Everybody is like, and the Spoiler. more Star Wars they do, the more people are are going to be in it. Yeah. Everybody's already in the MCU. Also, like. Forrest Whitaker went to the same school as Will I Am and Susanna Hoffs on the Bengals. <laughs> uh, so there's right. that. And then now we're in present day, and T'Chaka's son T'Challa is to be pr- crowned king. After his father's death, and we we remembered his father's death from Civil War. Civil War, which was yeah. how many movies ago now? Uh, this is this is another issue go. I kind of It seems like there's a long time ago. Uh, but you know, like that. what we saw in between is Guardians of the Galaxy two and Doctor Strange, I think. So we didn't focus on the developments from this. So maybe the time isn't that long before a new king is crowned because don't they have to crown him pretty quick and yeah yeah they're 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 talking about like he was it's been like in the same week that that happened okay Okay. that all like all the events of civil war happened and then this is about a week later so this is some of my question here so he's being crowned the king without having to fight anybody but he only has to fight somebody if there's a challenge so this is yeah the whole thing is the whole yeah Forest warrior Baker falls says, is there any challenges and everybody's like we don't challenge today and they're all like yeah we don't mm-hmm. you know the mining uh uh tribe we don't challenge today and then that's where the jabari come down yeah um but he see so he and okoye the leader of the door melage royal guard ex- oh before he can be crowned king they have to have nakia there because he says i want her to be there right or, or he mm-hmm. wants her to know about my dad dying because she's his ex from what we yeah. understand. He they're ex-lover. they're they're off again and on again. Okay. It's lovers. The struggle is distance. Mm-hmm. They're each other's people. They're each other's person. They're each other's person. But um, like their their paths are have diverged. Yeah. They're the chosen work. Okay. But he wants to go find her so that before they do the ceremony. He wants her there because he cares for her. He loves and her. It it offers us a good chance for kick ass battle scenes with Black Panther kicking ass. Mm-hmm. Uh, but they keep talking the funny little bit about him freezing. Well, you're gonna freeze. Don't freeze. I, I never freeze. You know, and then he freezes because she's so beautiful. Uh, um, yeah, that's and, fun. And Chadwick Boseman, we you know Chadwick Boseman's great. And rest in peace. Yeah, he's from Anderson, South Carolina, which is close to here. There you go. Uh, he graduated in 1995 from T.L. Hannah High School, and he was on the basketball team. So yeah, there's been four MCU movies between Civil War and Black Panther, and two okay. years. And so it took two years for them to name a yeah. king. For no. Him. This is it's. Oh, you said it's this takes movie. place right at like after the Civil War events. But for us, we've watched four movies in between: Doctor Strange, Guardians of the Galaxy Two, Spider Man Homecoming, and Thor Ragnarok. Okay, so that's why it feels like so long ago. Well, yeah, that and Felicia Rashad was Chadwick Boseman's mentor at Howard. Uh, just so you know, <laughs> uh, our mm-hmm. wanted to bring that up. Uh, <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so uh, 
and then we we cut to claw and the american named eric stevens aka killmonger steal a wakandan artifact made of vibranium from from a museum in london and they poison that woman and then he's got somebody on the inside at the museum an inside museum spy that helps him yeah get and, that. Uh, yeah we and never learn her name but yeah before she, she dies right yeah she's kind of an interesting side note just that in the comics there was like nakia and okoye were both dora milaje and nakia had an excessive fascination with the chala and to the point where she got like psycho jealous and uh when uh, she was rejected and then kind of became a villain called malice. And at one point when she was defeated or something, Killmonger showed up and Killmonger in the comics was, was raised in America, but also has his own like Njidaka village in Wakanda somewhere. So he was able okay. to, and so Nakia kind of teamed up with Killmonger to take out, uh, to try to take out T'Challa at some point. Really? Uh, Cause she was sort of broken mentally. So they've changed her character a lot in this too. Well, but, they uh, say this, this lady and this is named Linda Johnson. Yeah, that's her character name. We, yeah. we never hear it. Yeah, I don't know if we were here, but it's. I just googled Killmonger's girlfriend, and mm-hmm. she was a former black ops operative turned criminal who was the lover of Eric Killmonger until he betrayed and killed her. Yeah, I don't know if that's just in the movie or what, but but Andy Circus played. No, I think it's Hawk. somewhere. I read that it's more than just in the movie. Like she. Is a character to him, like she's his girlfriend or something. Yeah, I don't know if it was from the comics, but it was more than what was given in the movie. Okay, maybe they cut all of her scenes or something. But Claw, we get our first look at Claw too, and he's well. No, we, it's not our first look, right? Because wasn't he in a previous movie? As yeah, Claw? he was an agent of Ultron. Boat? He was. Uh, it was the source of vibranium that Ultron sort of made him a billionaire, okay. and uh, he took vibranium so he could make. Uh, vibranium ultrons or something and uh he's played by andy circus whose father was an iraqi armenian gynecologist those are the guys who wondered <laughs> and andy circus does the voice of something from the hobbits right Gollum, Gollum lord of the rings yeah. and he also did the uh, like the physicality of it and harry potter the Gollum. no harry potter, lord yeah. help you those are extremely <laughs> different things. lord of the rings help you no I and then Mike, and we it. see Mike. He's with Michael B. Jordan, who went to Newark Arts High School, home of the Jaguars. Uh, Savion Glover also went to that same school. Anyway, incidentally, Claw in the yeah. comics is the person who killed T'Chaka. It wasn't oh, Zemo, really. Uh, and yeah, because he was he was just like a uh, he had like a shitty chin strap beard, and he was like like the stereotypical ivory trader looking kind of jungle exploitation guy. Yeah, and he was out there to steal and mine vibranium, and there was a th- uh, so he was like was slaughtering Wakandans, including T'Chaka, because he had developed this sort of sonic weapon kind of thing with the vibranium because it sort of absorbs. But he did steal kinetic energy and stuff. Like he, he the- did, yeah. and then T'Cha- uh, T'Challa as an eight-year-old, which is when T'Chaka died in the comics. He oh, was right. like a yeah. became a boy king. Uh, like was like fended off claw and like shot him with this sonic thing that just ruined his arm and broke everything and then eventually claw sort of morphs into this living being of sound like he's the master of sound he's like this weird red this weird faced thing with a like a it looks like a radar dish on his hand that like it's basically a huge woofer i guess that Oh, shoots sonic shoots energy like sonic sound and energy. yeah and he can kind of like become sound and shoot around and fly he's like way super powered and he's one of the masters of evil and stuff so this is this is kind of a different version of claw but he still has a similar enough look that and and that's what his whole robot arm thing okay that's that he cool. has that's kind of a, a nod to what he was is in the comics he's got like he can shoot shit out of his hand yeah i kind of like how they made that hand thing that spreads apart and all that that was kind of cool looking yeah realistic seeming mm-hmm. um yeah so that's what i was going to ask uh, that woman it's you know I, before i realized that 
the lady of the coffee shop is his like girlfriend is and with him i was like is she, she presumably poisoned the museum lady how long was she in on it did she get the job at the museum just to do that like how long was she been working at that museum undercover or did he seduce a museum employee uh to <laughs> the seduction to go back of the like, museum. did she already work there or Barista. did she have to apply for a job there i think she was planted there it's what we there i don't think she was previously employed there i don't like how i wonder how many coffee she served that day before the plan went into effect like did she mess up anybody's coffee orders he did what she had to do to get the job done. Yeah. She had to do. She, she lied and waiting to and strike. Linda Johnson is her name. Linda Johnson. Interest. Oh, yeah. Uh oh. Uh oh. All right. Andy's upset. Andy's upset. No, I just learned something because I was looking Wendy into this Linda Johnson and she was initially cast. Uh, the character's name was Tilda Johnson, who is actually oh. a Marvel character. Uh, Deadly Nightshade. Uh, who is like a did you say deadly Captain nightshade? America villain? Yeah, like she's the deadly nightshade and who is real big on poisons and stuff like chemical alteration. Like, maybe I think that's she was what you read in the werewolves for a while, and I think she's the reason that there is, there's well, deadly a storyline where Captain America turned into a werewolf. <laughs> so, really? that, that's interesting that they decided to. Uh, say all right she's not nightshade but like the fact that she's poisoning people is a nightshade kind of thing to she's do. a cool looking character if you look up she's she's very scantily clad in a lot of Marvel yes comics. yeah she's basically runs around in a bikini and thigh high leather leather boots that's misogyny well it's 70s and comics. best yeah well if anybody is to perfect misogyny it's comic book writers so <laughs> mm, that's true and it's comic book fans more likely yeah also the it whole says- world and yeah, also the whole world. Yeah, yeah, that's true. <laughs> okay, well, that's an interesting little thing we just dug up, right? That yep. it's kind of related to this. Uh, and then we're at, we come back to the ceremony where uh, T'Challa is going to become king, uh, but the leader of the Jabari tribe, Mbaku, challenges T'Challa to return. Handsome Mbaku. Ritual. Handsome Mbaku, yeah. So this actor, are you into this guy there, TBJ? Oh, you, she, you know she's into Winston Duke. She said it on numerous occasions. Thank you for paying attention to me, Art. Yes, the answer is yes. And Kenny, Winston yes. Duke? And have you met Winston Duke personally, who, who was born in Tobago and moved to Brooklyn? If I had met him personally, um, you would know. Well, you know, he went to the same high school as Kristen Wiig uh, in Boston. Or uh, Rochester, actually, New York. Upstate New York. So, uh, Brighton High School, home of the parents. I don't, I, I don't think. Didn't we already do this episode home. when we weren't here? <laughs> <laughs> we don't need. You to, don't want to trust their episode when we weren't. Art here, Star either. and I talked about Jim Rice uh, with the Boston Red Sox for like. We did. Minutes. We did. We talked about Major League MLB the Show for an hour. Uh, yeah, <laughs> we, we lot, lot are a lot of sports ball. This is our <laughs> third attempt at Black Panther, and this time I think we're, actually I think we're doing movie. pretty darn good. Like we're, yeah. we almost got we're getting this, in there. Yeah, this fight at Warriors Fall. We, we're getting there. It so, just took it just took us a few tries. We're about to get to one of my biggest things. That is like a question. Maybe maybe you're gonna just smooth it over and and explain it to me. But like already, you've already kind of talked me back from why wasn't he king sooner? Maybe it was only a week. They had to get mm-hmm. Nakia there, not yeah. Nakia. But uh, so are we to assume that? So, but part of my issue is oh, Black wait, wait, Panther. Wait. Black Panther is already Black Panther. Like yeah. he's already fought Black as Panther, Black, but and you the can't king. become Black Panther until you drink the purple juice and become king, right? <laughs> it, it's it's like. Juice. Uh, the purple it's, flower it's, it's two yourself. different it's two different positions the king of wakanda and the black panther protector of black hot so you can chaka black- was no longer the black panther when he was king oh t'challa Chala. wasn't black panther anymore no because he that was, the was king my of big wakanda. question is he were he switching this old man was black was was beating people up as black panther but no. maybe he could if you drink the purple juice no i think t'challa worked as the black panther a protector of wakanda maybe along the lines of uh like a he's like the the warrior prince so he's already the, the government 
And so, and it's in the comics was like it's the the chieftain of the Black Panther clan, or like there's a there's a few different clans that are dedicated to different animal totems. Like Mbaku, uh, in the comics is his super villain. He was a straight up villain for a while, and his uh, character's name was Man Ape, and he dressed like a big white gorilla. He was the leader okay. of the white gorilla clan. Right, and that was a, a little sketchy uh, of a character. So one of the things I love about this movie is how they turned Mbaku into an awesome character. Badass. Yeah. Very intimidating when While his still, tribe comes up. Yeah. 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 That was it's like a, one of the best scenes. Yeah. That first guy walks in. It's like, ooh, they're slow motion. This is tough. Right. Yeah. And, Gives and, you and, chills. Gives yeah. You yeah. Chills. When they come in, Bart, you're like, oh shit, man, these guys are tough. Can you imagine I mean, if Scott Snyder directed this? You mean J- Zack Snyder? Zack I mean, Snyder, yeah. D. Snyder? Scott Snyder, the, the, the writer, right? The, yeah, uh, Scott Snyder wrote a Batman, lot of Batman. Batman and all of them, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Zach, no, Zach. Not the entire movie would be slow motion. Zach <laughs> it would be one hundred percent slow Hold motion. It, it, it could be a, Z- a Zack Snyder Michael Bay collabo. Mm-mm. No thanks. It'd be a nine-hour movie, right? It's a no, thank you. With a little James Cameron mixed in. Nope. Uh, and one thing I wanted to note, like, there's a point later when uh, Killmonger takes the throne or like challenges for the throne, and they're like, "It would take, it will take weeks to prepare another thing, another uh, coronation." He's like, "No, the whole country don't got to be there. I just need him." Yeah. So that's that's oh, yeah, another really. reason why it's it's taking this long to have the Warrior Falls thing. They have to get the entire get nation, all the together. tribes together, and schedule yeah. it. Yeah. So okay, so this kind of answers a lot because my question was that if. Uh, Oh, you know what, Joe? I just thought yeah. of a good way for you to think about it. Yeah. We just watched this in real life. Queen Elizabeth died. Yeah. But king Charles's coronation just happened. Oh, She's did it been- happen? Is it king now? It's happened or it's happening now. Either it like it's like taking right this now? long. Okay. I think they're there to... this week. I think it's coming up. But for that, like that's all just bullshit. Like they don't do anything. They're just ceremonial, right? Like so. But the still, it takes that long for a ceremony post. Okay, that's a good yeah. way to think about it. It. It's, it takes a while to plan an event. Well, my biggest one of this size. problem was I was assuming that T'Chaka was the king and the Black Panther, so that he had the purple flower powers. So no. why did why did he so die when your the mind, whoever why is was the invincible? Black Panther is also the king. Yeah, I thought they had they were one and the same, and then I was like, so how come he wasn't invincible in that? building blew up like, black panther is not black invincible panther powers yeah but he's pretty pretty much he's tough but you blow up black panther he's still gonna die mm-hmm. unless you know he's got a, like sure he's throwing out some higher tech things that would absorb kinetic energy and stuff yeah, but he's not purple hey he's you wearing a suit powers. you get superpowers but you don't get super invulnerabilities mm-hmm. that's why he's still gotta wear the suit yeah. for the but then uh, also the just like when when um Kachala fights Mbaku. Like he doesn't have the powers of the Panther in that moment. So like once you pass the mantle from the Panther, Panther, but T'Challa does, right? Because yeah, t- yeah, no, T'Challa they, doesn't have the power of the Black Panther in that fight. Like he even said that, like no claws. He fights Mbaku. Yeah, yeah like the yeah, whole thing. They, they drain the power. No, yeah, so yeah. not when. Yeah, they drain the power when right. he so fought Mbaku. When, but yeah, he had to but, eat the purple flower real quick because he was fighting. Like when did he eat the purple flower the first time? Because he was fighting Captain. He's America been had the purple flower. He's been Go back a... to the other movies. He's right. been Black Panther. Yeah, because so like, but the, 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 he, just, the he wasn't the king. Passed. Once the, once the mantle gets passed, you don't keep your powers. It's not like oh, well now you're the Black Panther, but you're still going to have. But there can the only be one Black Panther. Panther, right? So you got to barf up your purple powers. <laughs> Presumably, somebody else barfed up their purple powers for him to get his purple powers, right? No. But T'Challa might still ha- he's child, T'Challa T'Challa was old Black Panther. He was. I mean, T'Chaka was Black Panther. That's but it. note that the power comes from a plant, so no one has to barf up. Yeah. Anything for the other one to take. Well, it. isn't that yeah. how they had to have him for the for the ceremony? T'Challa. They withdrew it from him. Yes. Yeah. But so he, he could have a fair fight with anyone who wanted to challenge. Right. But the source is the plant. So, but at some point. T'Challa decided I'm too old. Somebody else has to become Black Panther because T'Challa was a Black Panther at some point. T'Chaka was. I mean T'Chaka, yeah. Yes, the old, the old guy, right? So he was yeah. a Black Ooh, Panther king. and king at some point. But some point he had to say, "I'm going to remain king," but somebody else becomes Black Panther. 
right? So that we we're assuming that happened at some point. Uh, I don't necessarily know that he's he relinquished his uh, heart shaped herb given powers to he relinquished the title. He doesn't necessarily have to give up his powers as well. So two people can have the purple heart shaped flower in so there's a whole the garden of time. them yeah but aren't they just for the future king they say that later when he burns it all this is for future king. well because people they they plant them for them but they're right there so theoretically but they don't yeah. say this is for future black panthers they said this is for your future kings and he's like yeah. i'm the only mm-hmm. king burn it so boom so maybe maybe he's not king. it's like the it's like the the, the titles have been unified like, like, like uh, an ultimate Mike, warrior and hulk hogan fought and yeah, yeah exactly it's the heavyweight championship and the intercontinental championship one guy has both titles now or like when so, he-man and skeletor unify the two swords i don't know i just see, less I feel like, that. like we're getting a little loosey-goosey on the the rules <laughs> who, who is we <laughs> the wakandans you're gonna tell marvel that you're gonna tell marvel yeah the uh, whoever whoever originally created Marvel. <laughs> Stanley's getting a little loosey goosey with this. Stanley was all about loosey goosey. Okay. Anyway, T'Challa defeats M'Baku, and M'Baku's power in Marvel Snap is that he jumps out of your deck uh, at a random to place. a random yes, yeah, so, which is kind of signifies his his role in this. Like he says, "I will not help you. I don't give a shit." And then he shows up. But he shows up to help. But yeah. T'Challa defeats M'Baku and persuades him that it'd be better to yield rather than to die in combat. And M'Baku finally taps out with a universal sign for tapping out the same way Greg the Hammer Valentine tapped out of the Boston Crab uh, when the Iron Sheik put him in the Boston Crab in 1987's uh, <laughs> Survivor Series. <laughs> I don't know. I made that up. <laughs> Um, but you know, but I love how tapping out that's the same tapping out as wrestling, it's just universal yep. tapping out sign. Yep, that's why I call it tapping out. You, your mom called it tapping out last night. You're a dumb asshole. You're a dick. <laughs> I just want to note that you two share a mom. Oh, we do. oh yeah, yeah, that's yeah. True. Uh, and Baku, no one, by... you're never supposed to take your mom jokes literally. That's true. <laughs> yeah, it's still a little cringy when it's, yeah, it is weird when it's your own mom. mom. Okay, so we talked about. I, I usually do stuff like, uh, like someone says something about, uh, like the commercial comes on about Pepto Bismol having indigestion or something, and I'll say, "Your mom had indigestion last night." To nobody in particular. And damn, it doesn't even mean anything. It doesn't mean anything at it's all. It's not a sexual thing. I just like it's just a stupid thing to say, and I enjoy saying stupid shit. You enjoy your mama jokes. I got it. Yeah. Not all your mama jokes are sad. There, sometimes true. they're just calling your mama dumb. Your mama's got a glass eye with a fish in it. Uh, your mama, your mama, your mama. I haven't heard that That's one. That's a rap song. Anyway, River. Uh, the, uh, the so we t- I think TBJ talked about this a few episodes ago. These these elders, the the different old people that like Dorothy Steele Merchant, who was a started her acting career at age eighty eight. She's the Merchant Tribe elder, that older lady. Yeah, we did talk about uh, when we our first attempt at Black Panther. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, I fell down a rabbit hole looking up some of these. On movies. our second attempt, oh, yeah. Joe fell down a rabbit hole. Yeah, I did. I know we probably already talked about this. Yeah, it's not our, a bad rabbit, rabbit hole to be uh, in. It's pretty cool how some of these people came into this movie. Well, the River Tribe elder stands out. He's the guy that's got the big plate in his lip, and he is an actual actor. I don't know why I thought some of these guys were just like extras or something but he's an actor uh from and for you two who weren't here last last time i also uh went down a joe rabbit oh shit <laughs> i went down a joe rabbit hole and i connected him to force whitaker because he also was on godfather of harlem which force whitaker is star of as bumpy johnson but continue on joe and he yeah. plays and he, he's french and he also plays a French, yeah, a, 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 a person of French descent on yes. Father of Harlem. Yeah, the, uh, this guy Isaac de Bancole from was born in the Ivory Coast. We talked about that in the last episode, so you can listen to the previous episode if you want. But he he's got a pilot's license, so and then he was a pilot, and he met some French director that got him to start drama school. So 
It's kind of funny. We talked about that. So, but then, Ch- anyway, T'Challa eats the heart shaped flower, gets buried, sees his father in the ancestral plane, who tells him he's a good man. At the end, he leaves it as T'Chaka says, You're a good man, so it'll be tough for you to be king. And this, my question is, does this suggest that T'Chaka wasn't a good man? Well, that's what we learn that's later in the learning. film. By leaving that boy, he wasn't necessarily a good man. And the war dogs. Like you said, but then are killing people, so, right? So for someone who kind of sides with Hellmonger, you know, the cliche is heavy is the head that wears the crown kind of thing. Okay. So when you're king or queen, you have to make tough decisions. It don't necessarily mean you're not a good person. It right. just sometimes you have to make choices, quote unquote, for the greater good. Where some may see like, oh. You know, unless you're like a despot or some shit, or, or you like, you really just want to like kill everybody because you are the king. Like you're, you're like fucking, you know, uh, what's the name? Uh, you're fighting for to see who's going to be on the Iron Throne or some shit like that. Not all kings are. Well, sometimes kings yeah. have to make tough choices, which right. some of you as bad choices. Well, and, and, and Killmonger yeah. does, like you said, when he be- becomes king. Mm-hmm. Like when he burns all the purple flower, that's when I felt like he makes his turn to being like, he's pissed and he's like, I'm just king forever. Now, fuck you guys. He's got that power. He's like drunk with power. And it's like, are you really just trying to help all the other people who are oppressed? Or are you? It's interesting forever? that that's the moment it turned from you and not the moment he killed <laughs> his own girlfriend. Oh, yeah. I guess. Yeah. Was that before? Yeah. Wait, no, that was that. Oh yeah, that was before. no. He kills his own girlfriend. Yeah, I guess that was gone. before. Yeah, way before he killed. Yeah, but he didn't. Uh... Oh yeah, he kills her. There's no excuse. It was yeah. his girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> Is it his girlfriend though, or did he just seduce her to get her to do what he wanted? In fact, that makes him a bad person too. So I guess, either way, yeah, I guess he's got some shades of evil. Also, yeah. he's got a lot of bumps all over his body, and each bump signifies a he's murder a he committed. So yeah, he's he's become <laughs> right. obsessed with killing. And they're not yeah. all job related. Yeah, I guess that's true. But they're all part of his drive. I well, guess. and that's I got a question later for TBJ on that because he gets into his military. Bill Michael will make a great set. Yeah, he would. Yeah, he which is why a lot he's of people dead. and children. But I agree. Uh, you know, I guess I agree with why he. I mean, I understand why he's where he is, and it's like we, ha- our people, have this these weapons. You know, anyway, so. Anyway, T'Challa eats. Yeah, he. Yeah, T'Challa asks Nakia to stay. He wants her to be queen, and she says, "Nah, I found my true calling." Bra. Uh, she <laughs> says, "People need help. I can't turn a blind eye." She says, "Well, kind of could start helping others, being you know, foreign aid, refugee assistance, etc." So she's kind of got the same kind of idea as Killmonger, just not violently you know going about it you know she's like we can help we don't have to stay isolated there's there's things we can do uh so she's like a war dog missionary type of person like she's going and helping people and saving people but not like pushing religion on them like missionaries do well hopefully not that we know of. she's not we see it we get a pink and lupita nyongo is uh plays her and she was born in mexico city while her father was a visiting professor there. And that's how she got her name Lupita. I see. Because her family tradition was to name uh, the child after what's the, their circumstance or what's around them. And because she was in Mexico City, she got the name Lupita. So there you go. That's cool. And she's very uh, attractive. Um, I don't know if very. you guys know that. Very, very. She's like. Super she is model. gorgeous. Super gorgeous. Model. Yeah, she is. Almost like not real. Like it's almost like not real. Like you couldn't make somebody. So basically, she's like Beyonce she, or something. She, like she's Beyonce. like she's like the female version of in TBJ's eyes, Michael B. Jordan for you. Yeah, maybe. I mean, she's just. I mean, she's stunning. her own fascinating human. So she is. She, she is, but I, I'm just trying to you know flip it for jo- trying to help Joe along. Oh, she's yeah, she's she's very stunning. She's up there with Michael and the Hensworths. Yep. What yeah, about, she's in so, that so, elite. Okay, Joe. Joe, yeah. Joe, you had to choose. 
You had to choose. <laughs> Lapita oh, yeah. or Scarlet? Uh, Scar Joe's cute, but she kind of looks like a buddy of mine from college. <laughs> she looks like Muppet. <laughs> she looks like Muppet. Uh, my oh, friend Muppet shit. a little bit. But she's like a, she's like a beautiful she version. It does, doesn't little... she? Well, that, what's that Ghost World movie she's in? Like she kind of looks like him, but she's still beautiful. Like I, well, she was like sixteen in that or something. Yeah, but I'm like, she looks like a friend of mine who is a dude that I know, but she's still attractive. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I think that make me weird. Like yeah, no, I, not Joe. That's not that's funny, not what makes you weird. Muppet has okay a lot of feminine for supple man features to find another man attractive. It's a lot of beautiful men out here. Are you it's hitting on me, okay. R Star? <laughs> I think R Star is hitting on me right now. You guys are already a thing. He's not hitting on me. He's been a thing. <laughs> okay, we're jumping to the rhino scene. The, we get the big rhino. Uh, Wakabi says refugees bring their problems. You know, he's trying to talk to Chala out of the the whole, you know, reaching out and stuff. He's like, no, you don't, don't want to bring refugees here. They bring their problems. T'Challa says, Wakanda doesn't wage war. Then Nikoi calls her lover and shows up on the little phone thing. Says, Boy, you'll never baby. believe what we picked up on radar. Uh, it's her husband. Yeah, so they find, yeah. Her, oh, they're married? Mm-hmm. She, just they her, she, called, she said, my lover. Oh, she my love, lover. lover or somewhere. My love. She says my love, but they're married. Love. And Wakabi is played by Daniel Kaluuya, which is he's in a million things since then, right? I don't know if he was already in what's that movie about? Get it out. Get, get out. Is it Get Out? That's probably what you're thinking. Yeah, he's in Get Out, but he was in another movie by the same, the other horror one. Nope. He was in Nope. Nope. And, uh, just what, wasn't he in? Nope uh, 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 what was it? Hey, Judas uh, and the did... Black Messiah. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was trying to think of. I couldn't remember of the stuff. title. And he's British. He's a he's an ardent supporter of Arsenal Football Club, just so you guys know. And he began doing improv at age nine. Uh, but anyway, Wakabi created in 1969 at Avengers number 62 by Roy Thomas and John Mashima. Oh yeah, what's that character like? Uh, in comics, Wakabi was kind of more like a really staunch traditionalist. He was very much of the old ways, and he was also like the head of security. Okay, he kind of is like that too. He's border border tribe, yeah, border tribe, yeah. And he's and he's he's a traditionalist. Like he's, they I don't necessarily know he's a he's stuff. a rhino farmer, but uh, <laughs> but that's awesome. I like that exists. Yeah, those rhinos are badass, and I will mention my dog. My dog wants to attack the rhinos every time they're on the on the screen. Uh, <laughs> she thinks I don't know what she thinks they are, but she starts barking and jumping at the TV uh, when she sees the rhinos. So <laughs> that's kind of fun. Uh, fun uh, fact: yeah. um, he will show up again in Marvel. Well, kind of Marvel, kind of not, depending on who's producing it. He will be in the Spider Verse. Oh, what copy uh. is? Not the character, the actor. Oh, oh, as a different oh. character, he plays more than one oh. character in the MCU. No, oh. <laughs> Spider Verse is not technically oh. the MCU. The Spider no, Versus? that's yeah. what you remember. We had this discussion where Spider Man, not, not yet, maybe. Wait a minute, are we talking about Into the Spider Verse, the cartoon? It's yeah. going to be the next one that comes out. Uh, oh, oh, oh that's not even out yet. I see, I see. Um. Akoy Akoye is played by Denai Garira. Garira? Garira. She was born in Iowa, but her family moved back to Zimbabwe, where they were from when she was five. And her brother is a chiropractor. So how about that? And she's actually a playwright of a Broadway play called Eclipsed, and she was nominated for a Tony Award. So Lupita was in that play. And oh yeah, I think she was in yeah. And uh when I forgot to met, mention Chadwick Bozeman wrote a play when he was in high school. Uh so we got all these playwrights. All these people are really talented in all kinds of ways. Uh, anyway, Wakabi urges T'Challa to bring back Claude, dead or alive. And then uh, before they leave to go to Korea, Shuri gets T'Challa all hooked up with remote access Kamoyo beads with a new badass suit and sneakers. 
And she says, why do you have your toes out in my lab? <laughs> what, are the, <laughs> what is this? And that little funny scene about his, his feet. Um, and then Shuri shows him the cool suit that absorbs energy. And that fun Iron Man type scene where it's all the tech, you know, learning about mm-hmm. all the cool tech. And then the nanites absorb the kinetic energy and hold it for redistribution, which is cool. You learn how his suit works uh, and that, you know, it absorbs all the explosions and stuff. So you always know when he's taking a bunch of hits, he's about to go off, uh, which is kind of cool. Yeah. A little bit in the movie, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, so. Shuri created in 2005 by Reginald Hudland and John Romita Jr. To, she wasn't created until 2005? Correct. So she wasn't in the old Black Panther stuff, huh? Nope. She wasn't huh. even in the Priest stuff. It was like right after Christopher Priest left the title. Christopher Priest, who uh, in 1998 created uh, Nakia, Okoye, Zuri, uh, Everett K. Ross, The White Wolf, uh, a lot of these characters. So Everett K. Ross is just run. a Black Panther character. Like he's not a. So actually, he was introduced in uh, Kazar number 17, not long before he was in Black Panther. But uh, Kazar, Kazar is like a. Kazar's the jungle guy with Zabu. Yeah. And I only know that from because Marvel Snap. Marvel Snap. But yeah. I was I was watching an old uh, Spider Man episode from 1982, and Kazar and Zabu were in it. Like, there you oh go. Gosh. They're did from you the get Savage excited? Land. I did. Did, get you, excited. did you want to grab your phone and start playing Snap? I did. It made me wake up and play Snap because I was half asleep. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. like Kazar comes from this the Savage Land, which is a weird prehistoric jungle hidden in Antarctica. Oh, that I'm, I okay. would like them to introduce in the MCU just because I think it's interesting. But it's in present day, even though it's prehistoric. Yeah, there's dinosaurs. Okay. But I think it's uh, like an artificially created thing. I, I don't know a whole lot about the origin of the Savage Land, but uh, it's kind of this weird, interesting little MC Marvel comic location. It's not an MCU location just yet. Well, when I Googled Letitia Wright, who plays uh, Shuri, mm-hmm. you know how Google brings up a list of like commonly asked questions about things when you Google it. Like right away, I saw it said, "Why did Letitia lose her MCU role?" And I was, "What? Did they?" Yeah, there Letitia? was some controversy on some of her opinions during COVID. Yeah, anti well, anti vaccine. Yeah. Stuff, mm-hmm. right? So but they she said she it. she almost quit Marvel because she didn't want to mm-hmm. get vaccinated. I guess. Um, yeah, which I don't know. Did that's but there's that whole thing where like Nicki Minaj's cousin was uh who lives somewhere in Africa was saying some like she was saying anti-vax shit because of her claiming her cousin I don't know got gonorrhea or something for, I don't even I half remember what oh, Letty's was that. very much religion based um but she unlike a lot of people turned it around for that bag and apologized. Oh, yeah. Oh, she did was she? Like okay. Born and and then got really hurt. Filming Wakanda, Wakanda forever. Oh, she got physically hurt? Like stunt, doing stunts? I don't know if it was stunts or what it was doing. But I can't remember. To, she did get an injury. Yeah, they kind of like that. I don't say pushed it back, but they had to like halt production because she was hurt that bad. Ooh. That's awesome. Oh, Nicki Minaj. Uh, thought her cousin got swollen testicles from a covid vaccine oh i remember the swollen testicle thing now that you say that yeah sorry i just had to remember what that was about <laughs> I'm, I'm not laughing about that i'm just testicles are funny Always. yeah so, uh... <laughs> testicles testicles <laughs> uh i will say uh leticia wright did you know, she was born in South America, but when she was five, moved to London, or she was eight when she moved to London and went to a Duke's Aldridge Academy, where they also make Duke's Mayo. Okay, that's not true. Uh, yeah. But there's a, a Wait, British rapper. Did, did Winston Duke 32. invent Duke's Mayo? Maybe. But she was inspired Actually. to become an actress by the movie Aquila and the Bee. Have you guys ever heard of that movie? Yeah. I do. Ooh, what a full circle that the mom and Akila and the bee is her mom in this movie. That's what, what? I was about to say. Yeah, I was going to say it's Angela Bassett's in that. So How cool. Yeah, so there you go. 
there you go. I had never heard of that movie, but now I want to watch it. Interestingly enough, you've Amanda, never heard of Aquila and the Bee? I probably heard of it somewhere, but with like Kiki Palmer, Lawrence Fishburne, Excelsior. Angela Bassett. Well, it came out in 2006. Uses, uses the tools of the incompetent who used them to build monuments of nothing. You know, none of that where he makes a, her talk about I, she's not really scared. I had a one year old baby uh, that year, so I had no idea what was going on in the rest of the world. I'll give you that. I'll give you that excuse. Go watch like, it. It's good. From when my son was born to like the last, like maybe two years ago, I was just like <laughs> not in touch with <laughs> anything. No idea what's happening outside of the world. I don't know why I had children. I got to keep them alive somehow. How do you do this? I mean, that's some fight. Go watch it. Okay. I'm going to rent it uh, or watch it wherever I can watch it. But it looks good. I mean, and then I'm thinking maybe I'll just see everything Angela Bassett's ever done. Why not just do an Angela Bassett? I feel like a smart move for you because she does a damn thing. She's a bad ass. Uh, She's a bad man, but Gemma. And her, her character, Ramonda was debuted in uh, Marvel Comics Presents number 14 in 1989, created by noted Black Panther creator or, or artist, writer, Don McGregor. He didn't create Black Panther, but he did a lot of world building of Wakanda throughout the 70s. Who did? And Don McGregor. Oh, Don McGregor. I yep. think. And Ramonda is not actually T'Challa's mother in the comics. It's T'Challa's stepmother. Yes, she, I knew that. She, 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 oh, really? Shuri's mother, but not oh, T'Challa. Shuri mother. and T'Challa aren't. They are half. They're half siblings, and sister. Yeah, and also weirdly, uh, right. T'Challa's birth mother, uh, Niami, uh, she died when she was he was very young, and somehow she never had a speaking appearance in Marvel comics until 2018. They didn't do anything to explore her character until 2018. Really? Yeah. And I don't know anything about it. What year did this movie that we're talking about come out? Uh, shit. 2018. It was 2018. Was it? I was wondering if it was because of the movie and everything or something. They did. Did they do a lot more? Black Panther comics around? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I think our star said he did all the three everything yeah, yeah like Ta-Nehisi Coates uh was writing stuff and like they had yeah. some spinoffs like World of Wakanda or uh I think wasn't there like a Wakandans in space series Wakanda. some kind Wakanda. of like the intergalactic empire of Wakanda or something like There's people from a... Wakanda had a space envoy and had cosmic adventures and shit if you look at Black Panther on Disney Plus, there's one of the extras they have like this round table discussion with Don McGregor uh Tanahisi Coates, uh Ryan Coogler, uh there's like they have Christopher Priest there. I don't know if I don't know if he I don't think he, he was there, but then some other who else wrote Black Panther comics? There was another uh, Reginald Hudlin, who was also <sighs> the president of BET for a little while, I think. Maybe that's who that was. I I think that's who it was. He was like leading a conversation, maybe. Maybe that was him. I can't remember. I only watched a little bit of it. I can't remember what I was even... I was looking for something in particular. I was like watching the gag reels and stuff. It was really late. It was like 2 in the morning. I was like, why am I not in bed? Why am I watching? (laughs) And uh, so I was like half asleep. I don't know who all was there. But it was kind of a cool little discussion just about the meaningfulness of Black Panther and... Mm -hmm. uh, when they wrote it and then Don, you know, and Don, uh, what's his name? Don McGregor kind of said, yeah. I think in that conversation, he alludes to the fact that he felt like he was given this project just for it to die. Like sometimes like, like, uh, yeah. like when, what's his name? Who wrote GI Joe? I'm forgetting that guy's name now. My favorite guy, Larry, Larry Hama. Hama, Larry Hama, Larry Hama said the same thing. Friend like, of the show. He said, yeah, <laughs> he was like, they gave me all the crap because I'm just a nobody. And they gave me this, you know, they, they have this idea where we're going to go. Just kill a dog. Just give it to whoever. And so he took GI Joe and like put his heart and soul into it. And it became a thing. And he's like, a sex now. Don McGregor said the same thing. He was like, they gave it to me just because they thought it was going to die. It was going to no, go nowhere. But I put my energy into making it a thing. And um, yeah, you know, like a lot of his stories, there was like a, uh, were like published piecemeal. He didn't get like, 
full comics there's this thing called panther's quest that was like backup stories in some other comic series but they just kind of it, it involved a lot of in-depth like building of the world of wakanda and like like there's a like a downtown area of Wakanda or like this main like there's maps of Wakanda that he built. I think he he like constructed like just sort of I naming think he geographical regions. To that. Like he like put all this effort into doing it. I think so. Was Don McGregor like a no name guy before this? I mean, I hadn't heard of him until I got really into Priest Black Panther and then started looking into you know earlier Black Panther yeah. comics and finding all this really detailed work from him. Yeah, maybe Priest wasn't that conversation there was there was an enemy he created named solomon prey with two wise who was like a a guy with weird bat wings growing out of his back that was also a drug dealer it was trying to introduce the drug trade into wakanda and black panther had to stop him wow and it was like like the artwork was really lushly painted that's not tom mcgregor i need to look up who that was but it was very interestingly and and T'Challa had like a his his love interest for a long time was like a American jazz singer named Monica Lynn. So I don't know if they'll ever introduce her. But I was like throughout the seventies and eighties, that was his main squeeze. Squeeze, you said squeeze. Um, so I am thinking that this Black Panther, like I know I was, couldn't remember if I had seen it before and whatever. So I. I really don't think I did see. I think I was waiting for us to get to it in, in nerd school. I'll have to go back and listen to our first few <laughs> episodes of nerd school to remember. But because I started watching, so the next one after this is Avengers Infinity War. So I just started like peeking into that to see. I definitely haven't seen any of that. So I'm we're officially at movies I haven't seen anything on. But it's exciting watching these movies for the first time. Um. And then hearing all this background really makes me want to read these, but I know I'm not gonna. <laughs> it's just I'm lazy, uh, lazier than I am wanting to read everything. I don't have time, man. You're not lazy. You have, you to, just... you have to squeeze it in when you can. Yeah, busy, yeah. Like, see, the thing is, some like some people, everyone reads at a different level, right? Right. So it's like, you know, I I don't want to say I joke. But I sit there and say, like, how I'm trying to read X amount of books this year. Uh, TBJ reads Goo Gobs of Books. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Brant P. Fundak seemed like he reads 15 books a day, you know? <laughs> <laughs> but it's like, it's one of those things where it's like, you know, you read the way that you can absorb the material. You're like, you don't want to sit there and read the shit. And then, like, you've read it, but you can't remember what you read just for the sake of reading. So like if you read, let's say if you want to uh, find a book that you want to, like you're interested in some character, yeah. you start reading their book, like no one says you have to read everything at once. You can read a book every two months. Well, and you I'm know? also a cheapskate. So it's like, if I if I have to pay for it, like I'm on Comixology <laughs> right now, just looking uh-huh. like, I don't even know if I have Comixology Unlimited or what the difference is. And then I look up Black Panther and it's overwhelming. Like there's 281 results. Where do I even begin? I had, like, and like so I, I just I started start? like the, the books that I got when this movie first came out, I literally just started reading some of them. And I'm starting with Black Panther from like the very beginning. You know, yeah. with his cape, and then you have like the so from the nineteen seventy, ex- whatever. Yeah, you have like exposition being shot at like yes. I am such and such, and I do this for such and such, and this is my such and such, and th- and then all of a sudden, here comes the battle after five pages of talking about the build up to the battle. Like we have to get out of here, and then like a well, whole I, lot of you know. It's, I but keep it's, finding it's that these it. these comics written in the sixties are so wordy, old, and dated, and it's like so hard to slug through. You got to yeah. find that charming you gotta find like old timey talk and uh like uh silly nicknames and like you yeah it you need a little bit of uh maybe not nostalgia but just the ability to find old timey comics charming in their own way if you're gonna start from when they do the anthologies so you can just 
the omnibus. Yeah, so you can just read them all in one place. Like I don't need it to be a collector's thing. I just want to read. I want to read the story, like how it originated. Especially now that we're watching the movie. I don't know. I don't know. You guys yeah. got me wanting to read comic books, so that's that's a uh, T'Challa originated Fantastic Four number fifty two. 1966 See, Jack so that's what, what what do i do do i do i go all the way back to the the black panther hey, comics or the first appearance because of... you're a joe because you're <laughs> joe it's like what bob i think what was was holding you back is you just can't like how andy told you what book you just can't go to that book you have to read Fantastic <laughs> Four number one that's to it. get to that's that exactly point. It. so you said he shows up in Fantastic Four number what 52. 52. Right, so, so now I want to go Fantastic, Fantastic Four. Four number one. And then I got to research. To when did Fantastic Four originate? Oh, the 1930s. So now 1961. Go <laughs> and Fantastic the first, Four, 1961. And I guarantee basically... the first issue of Fantastic Four has some other character in it that originated in the 40s that I got to go back to. And it's just never ending. But you, you don't have to go. You, you don't have to go back. You don't you can, have to. You, you can, keep saying I you got can to start reading it, and then like you know what? Like this is like the way I the way I consume comics now is like I'll sit there, I'll find off the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> I'll I'll start off with a start point, do toilet reading room. and then I'm like, oh, toilet reading, I need yeah. to go back because I want to sit there and kind of see how we got to this point. Yeah. But I'm not going to say like, oh, I'm I'm reading House of X. I might have to go all I now like I'm gonna sit down and find some way where I can kind of like get a summary of what the fuck happened. Yeah. And then when I'm reading it, it'll say see, like comics always say, Yeah, yeah, see Amazing Spider-Man number 664. Yeah. So I'll go, go back, back and I'll and read that, that issue. Yeah. 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 I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go all the way back to to number but, one. But when you go back and read that issue that it that it that it references. Are you purchasing it, or do you own it already? Or are you just looking on Comicsology, or what? what I may, doing? I may see if it's on Comicsology. If the, if it's something I really like, like I'm, I'm buying Gambit now, but like I'm also like on Comicsology, I've gotten to a point where I'm like I'm reading the new Amazing Spider-Man run. Comicsology only has it up to issue five. Like I'm, so I'm sitting there like I don't want to say I'm being cheap, but then it's almost like well I've, I've bought. Gambit number two. I bought this book. I bought that book. I bought that book. I'm not just going to sit there and just keep buying them. Are you buying physical copies? Or are you buying no, digital? Digital. digital. Okay. digital. Anybody, are any of you guys buying physical copies of anything right now, comic wise? I haven't been buying in a long time. The last physical comic I bought was Dr. Afram issue number one that I got from this. Uh, Charlotte Minicon. I bought that and I forgot the other book. But you said Doctor what? Doctor Afram. It's a, it's a Star Trek, not Star Trek. Star Wars character. And here's the thing, Joe. You were about uh, to make people so mad, Art. Say it again. You were about to make. I was about to what? She's we're freezing. She's freezing up. She's I was a, about to piss off a Star Trek fan. She's a carbonite sickness. She might be. But uh, here's the thing with Black Panther, if you want to go back. Like, he didn't have Black Panther Volume 1, Number 1. He never had his own actual self-titled series. He was created in 1966. Didn't have his own uh, series until 1976. Oh, 10 years of his existence before they gave him his own comic? Well, I mean, there was this, there was a comic called Jungle Action that uh, Jack Kirby kind of created that s- starred him, but he didn't have his name on his own comic until 1976. So, like, he had, like, sporadic appearances and a couple of miniseries and, and short-lived. Uh, I think we sometimes did talk it's good to co- Sometimes it's good to get comics just based on, you know, a certain character without having to buy like the whole run like like i've been trying to get this whole, i've been trying to get you know a black black first appearance of black goliath you know slab without having to spend a shit ton of money just that's, because go ahead that i was just saying like that's kind of what i did when i first really like got into comics whole hog in like the late 90s like i collected comics oh, before that whole hog 
But uh, I <laughs> I walked well, in. That means you just put your whole hog on the comic book while you're reading it, right? Yeah. No, I, I walked into a comic book in San Francisco when I lived there, you, uh, which is right next to Oakland. Into a comic walk book? into a comic book? Comic store, wow, what comic shop. <laughs> I mean, it was half comic shop, half toy store, I think. And, I just but, pulled to Andy. Yeah. It, it was the first uh, time I'd ever heard of the character Deadpool, which was had just been created in 1991. By who? Uh, by uh, Fabian, Fabian DeSaza and some oh. asswipe that can't draw feet. <laughs> But uh, <laughs> but uh, it was, and I, but this was uh, written by uh, Joe Kelly and artist Ed McGinnis, and it was the picture of this guy who looked sort of like Spider Man sitting on the Hulk shoulders for some reason, being silly. I was like, what the hell is this about? And I looked through it, and he had said a couple of lines that were kind of funny. So I was like, all right, I'm gonna find out about this Deadpool guy. I've never heard of him. And that's a Rob Liefeld thing. That's Rob Liefeld. So when you first got into comics, Rob Liefeld was your thing. Well, when I first started buying comics a lot. <laughs> yeah. Uh, because like before that, I had collected like maybe one like Spider-Man 2099 and a couple of weird little Spider-Man things and Transformers comics when I was younger. Uh, but and I, I sort of learned by osmosis X-Men stuff when I was in junior high and like I had some friends getting stuff and I got comics here and there. But when I first started buying regularly and being like super huge nerd it was deadpool that kind of hooked me in and i got really into that uh series and then shortly after that black panther that's they crazy re- they did the marvel knights relaunch and I just that started... hooked you in and that's like yeah so i'm yeah, like all right I'm gonna, this is deadpool number four i'm going to buy deadpool one two and three and four and figure out what this guy is and i like that so much i started looking for his previous appearances which were uh, so you liked that was when did you start hating deadpool the way he's drawn like no, no, like uh yeah. when when did Rob Life out hurt you, Andy? <laughs> when where did the bad man touch you, Andy? Is this therapy now? <laughs> you should I like when I, I the farther back I went, I had to find his first appearance in uh, New Mutants number ninety eight coming out in ninety one, and it's just I have so, that it's so I'm, fucking ugly. I have it too. I because have I had to read I'm, it. I've got it digitally and I forget, I think I bought it just for the first appearance thing. Just, just go look at some of his drawings. What is this? What is this appearance? New, New Mutants ninety eight. Ninety eight. It's a. It's it's what they call in the comic book world a key issue. Oh, it's the first Deadpool, and if you yeah, look at New, it, New Mutants ends at like number one hundred, so it's almost the end of New Mutants before it becomes X Force. And so, just, what's wrong with him? You said his feet. He can't draw feet. It looks like a normal comic to me. That's a. Um, thing with look at the uh, live film, but... look at the face. I don't know, it just looks like a comic, and then look at like uh, some some other uh, brigade. Look up Rob Liefeld Brigade or Rob Liefeld. Uh, did he what's another one of his characters, Andy? Rob Liefeld really wanted to be Jim Lee and tried to draw just like Jim Lee, except as a shittier version of Jim Lee, <laughs> and it just it never got better. Who's Jim Lee? Jim Lee was like one of the biggest artists uh, of the '90s. He had like a really sort of. You hated uh, him too. No, Jim Lee's fine. Jim Lee is uh, pretty good and clean and can draw really well. Okay, I found a Captain America that looked weird. Yeah, he's got oh, the Captain giant, America the, giant boobs. the boob shot. Yeah, yeah that yeah. ridiculous. He's just he's not very good at proportions. He's not good at his facial Did expressions see, are all shit. Have you found the shirtless Captain America, Joe? No. That's a shirt yeah. version of that. <laughs> I'm just going through. Yeah. Rob anyway, Life Black Panther. Panther. Anyway. Anyway, Black Panther. So I think we're far enough in the movie and we're far enough in this recording where we should probably pause. We're about to get to Korea, which is an action packed thing. We've been recording for uh, over an, well over an hour and a half. <laughs> right. But we can also. Yeah. I, shit. I was going to say that's push through and get through it so we can get to infinity war but also i have to finish taking a cpr class online course that's it's gonna take two hours i gotta, I gotta take this whole sexual harassment thing still i haven't done that yet good job oh i haven't either I, I, star, I did... stop harassing everybody no. <laughs> i don't well, know what happened there we we'll i think we might up. have lost tbj too so yeah might be I don't freezing. Know she's i'm here oh she's there it's just every time I really start to talk, it freezes. 
Oh. Yeah, so we need a better connection from TV. When she's back from Jamaica, uh, we'll have a better connection. <laughs> you make it sound like I'm always away. Italy, Jamaica. Aruba. Aruba. When are you Bahama. going to the Copacabana? Oh. At the Copa. <laughs> Cobra. Nashville's Cobana. next. Nashville. Are going, when are you going to Nashville? Cobra, Cobra Memorial Commander. Day when are you going? Memorial weekend. Okay. I'm taking my daughter Memorial Day weekend to see Taylor, Taylor Swift, Swift in New Jersey. <laughs> New Jersey. What? I only got what? tickets thanks to uh, an intern that works with us. I had extra ones and or an extra opportunity to get them. And so she talked me into it. And I was like, I don't know why I did it. Oh, isn't that the where is it at the Meadowlands or yeah the, it's at what the used to be or or so wherever the Giants play it's called something else now the Met Joe Life. I want you to take responsibility for your own actions going forward people can't talk you into doing things that you subconsciously <laughs> already want to do like you still I think you still think still hold on to the I fact that I fought you to buy Cobra Commander you did I Cobra up there and I don't Cobra know Commander He's the best bad terrorist guy. of the Skeletor. lander. Cobra, uh, la, 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 <laughs> I do. I want my daughter to have the experience of seeing her favorite artist in concert. That's going to be incredible. And it's supposed to be like a once in a lifetime, whatever this concert is, is Whoa. like mm-hmm. unbelievable. It's impossible in to get tickets. Lifetime. Plus, she gets to see New York City. And I get to take her to New York. You know, she's never been to New York City. And so. I know it's going to just make her I love New York you know? so yeah I love that's that a, for her yeah yeah. I mean I it's a, and I just hope you realize that what a you know a lucky thing it is that I'm spending too much money you know and then you got to figure out what can I do for the boy to make it up you know he doesn't like to go do stuff so it's like what how do I how do I be fair you know so I am a clone trooper see that's what he probably wants, yeah. Or like a, you know, like a real one of those real lightsabers, or right? Why mm-hmm. Definitely, he, he should build one out of Legos. Seems like you have the answers, Joe. For this, yeah, well, I don't have. Seems like you know. So I will eventually we'll figure out something for him. I offered to take him to a, like a Weezer concert or something because he likes <laughs> Weezer, but he likes Weezer. Yeah, he likes Weezer. He's got the weirdest musical tastes. Like he loves <laughs> he loves Tupac. <laughs> he likes as he should. Tupac, I think Weezer. I think everyone should have quote unquote weird musical tastes. Like yeah. I love everything. I don't yeah. care what it is. He I love classic everything. rock. He likes uh, classic rock. Is the shit. But he doesn't love all hip hop. Like he won't like. I can't believe he likes Tupac. He, the the thing is, he likes it because somebody else turned him on to it. So he likes only the Tupac songs that that person turned him on to. Not when I turned him on. You know. Like if you like Tupac, then you like this and this and this and this and this. And then, oh, but can't. you're dad. But I'm so dad. It's so different. Right, like you're not cool. Yeah, so, uh, but I'm you're trying cute, to girl. listen to Taylor Swift for my daughter. But what about I it? like Digi- some of it. Does he like Digital Underground? Because Tupac was there. I, I don't think he's. I don't even know if he hasn't even let me explain them where Tupac originated. You know. Like, <laughs> well, I did tell him he was a he was a backup dancer uh, with. Uh, Digital Underground and the Hump. He knows the Humpy Dance. He likes that, I think. But good. Um, but I think he only knows it from his uncle singing it at every wedding that we've been in our family. Somehow there's a tradition. Andy gets the microphone and does the Humpy Dance. At yeah, the- that <laughs> somehow <laughs> started when I worked at. Uh, I think it was like karaoke. But I when I back when I worked in, in San Francisco, I think there was like a holiday party at the company I worked for and. Like I guess people didn't like the cover band that was up there so much, so they'd seen me do Humpty Dance at karaoke because I can do the voice, y'all. <laughs> oh, I yeah. want to see this. It's going to break it down. Nerd school karaoke night. Yeah, we've had, so that. somebody's got to get married, TBJ, because we've had several weddings where I do Baby Got Back and Andy does Humpty Dance. I don't know how we <laughs> ever get the microphones. It's not a karaoke thing. I think we should <laughs> all just get together and do Journey. Mm-hmm. Journey songs. Oh yeah! Don't stop believing. We do need to do a karaoke night, and there's. I, always, I like. I think that would be fun. Isn't there a karaoke thing at the Heroes Con that we skipped or something? I don't know. You're probably only allowed to sing nerdy songs. <laughs> yeah. What like, class of Transformers? Nerdy more, more than the eye. 
Fine, Tormer. Well, I want us all to go to that thing, that, that art thing, where you draw, like, you draw Fine things in charity and you buy a little... Yeah, we can do it. I can clear my schedule this year. I got gotcha. you. Since I accidentally washed all the things I bought. Good job, idiot. So, pocket. You know what we need, right? We need Joe and Andy hell in a cell dog collar match to settle this <laughs> brotherly beat. We are going to be at Heroes Con again this year. Yes. Um, if you're a listener, we're, we're still developing what we're doing. Uh, last like year, we yes. did. Come meet That's, us. Get TBJ's autograph. I'm definitely doing autographs. We got to have a nerd school uh, luncheon to discuss what exactly we're going to do and how we're going to do it. The only yes. thing you know is that one It'll night, be fun. One night with Art Star will be auctioned off. One night alone. We've been auctioning that for a while. You can do whatever you want to him sexually. Just so you know, <laughs> I don't do feet. <laughs> uh, that's yeah, great. So factor that in, discount. We'll discount that. Yes. So mark your calendars June. Two, Crap, I don't remember the dates. 18th. 18th. I mean, 16th through the 18th. 16th through the 18th. That's that June? Time? Charlotte, North Carolina. It's yeah. June. It's June. It's coming up. Coming up. Wasn't it in May last year? Nope, it's always in June, you stupid son of a bitch. Yep, June 16th, 18th, Charlotte Convention Center. Oh, finally make you wrong and you're a piece of shit. Yep. All right, go to bed. All right, bye. Wrong piece of shit. See you later, everybody. Later, nerds. More Black Panther coming soon. Excelsior motherfucking Eeyore. Bye. Eeyore. What about Eeyore? Art stars taking his pants off. Thank you for listening to the Nerd School Podcast. They say I can't rap about the president no more. But evidently they don't see we in the streets still poor. Still more incarceration of my kids been by the prisons. And people thinking this election to end it racism. Proud of a pessimism, glad to see Obama, but don't expect me not to speak out when I still see problems, Mr. Officer. Now they POTUS look like me, you gon' think again when seeing brothers rolling down the street. Every Martin Luther King on his American dream, still a Rodney being beaten, screaming, fuck the police. Me, I'm running through the pasture, trying to get away from master, but the dogs is on my ass, I gotta move a little faster. Can't fast for Caucasian, but I got a couple papers from the plantation saying I graduated. Congratulations, cool beans, but to most school me. Try to dodge STDs, living off government cheese Trust the government, please, not even if it was me Sitting in the Oval Office as Commander-in-Chief Trying to give us us free, but there's a nigga in my ear saying You got it, Superman, you ought to keep it here Get this distinctly clear, I'm all about jetting Raps Kunta Kinte without the half-stepping A new chapter, packed with new lessons After that, the final exam, any questions? Queen City Podcast Network.com.